All right, welcome back to WDC Radio. I'm your host. I'm WDC. Again, I want to thank you for taking time out to listen and sharing this very important conversation around health and wellness. You know, I, I had no idea um, about this condition called rhabdomyolysis, and and I didn't know I had sickle cell trait until 10 years in the military, my second physical, and. I found out I had wrapped, I had sickle cell trait because I was transferring to another state and took that exam at the LA at the LA Air Force Base and they test for um, sickle cell trait because of their job skills and the pilots and so that's part of their lab work and when they called me back after that physical they called me I mean to me it was like in a panic he was like you need to come back to the clinic and I'm thinking like uh oh like that don't sound good so I make my way back to the to the to the base and. He sits me down and says, do you know you have sickle cell trait? I'm like, no. He says, well, we don't let you know. Um, but he gave me no information, no brochure, no flyer, no nothing. I'm 29 years old. Prime of my career, I've been exercising, playing basketball three or four times a week, four or five you know, hours at a time, exercising, doing that exercise test twice a year, and never had a complication that I thought at 29. And then at 36, well, at at 2004 or five, we get deployed. We're training soldiers and soldiers and Iraqi soldiers for the war to maneuver through the uh, convoys because they were attacking the convoys um, at that point in time. So we were training the soldiers that were going to Iraq how to maneuver through the convoys. And even at the training facility, I was still like having health issues. I was I could barely walk. My hand had swollen up. And I would go in, go into the medics, to the doctor, a sick call, and they were like, oh, you just have it's tendonitis, you know, it's nothing serious, just here's some pills. And, um, but there, was, there were times that I could barely walk, I could um, stand, my feet were hurting, my elbows, my shoulder, my back, and they just kept giving me pills, and it was like, nah, you should be fine, you know, it's just tendonitis, just, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't overwork yourself. And then in 2006, I'm at my master sergeant course at Camp Roberts, Central California, and I wake up that morning to uh, do the PT test, and I do the push-ups, the sit-ups, and I do that two-mile run. And as I shared at the end of that two-mile run, that last lap, I took off to sprint, and I felt this like electrical charge hit my body as the breeze was hitting me as I was sprinting. Didn't think nothing of it, crossed the finish line 16 minutes, put my hands over my head to get air in my lungs, all the routine that we're trained to do. And then I started feeling kind of weird and then everything started getting dark and I kneeled down, closed my eyes real tight and everything was spinning like a million miles an hour. Um, I felt nauseated as well. Uh, medics came and got me, rushed me to the doctors in the city and came in with some IVs and came back and said, you have kidney problems? I says, no. He says, well, you do now, and he walks out. And my instructor's standing there next to me like, what? And so he's like, Dad, you're just dehydrated, heat stroke. Go back and get some rest. You should be fine. Not the case. I went back, was sent back to the hospital that night because I woke up from my nap, still room spinning, throwing up, um, nauseated. And the night doctor, when he saw my CK levels, he was like, something's going on. So he put me on IVs for four days. I could barely walk. And uh, for four days, they flushed my system out and they diagnosed me with the heat stroke rhabdomyolysis condition. And then I went back home, went back to my doctors to, to seek my care. And all of a sudden, I could barely walk in 2010. So four years later, um, I could barely walk. And then I happened to have a conversation with a fellow officer friend of mine and was like, how you been? By this time, I'm depressed. I don't I, I don't couldn't walk and he was like well tell me so I told him what was going on he says well something like that happened to me where my muscles locked up he says but I have sickle cell traits so I got to do this and take these vitamins and I'm like why does that sound familiar he's like so I'm like wait a minute so I go back to the Air Force Base get that paperwork and sure enough positive sickle cell trait test I go home do my research I found that in the military for years um, uh, student athletes playing preseason football or running track or boxing exercising have collapsed and sickle cell trait was a trigger in a lot of those sudden deaths and so when I saw that I took that to UCLA Medical Center they retested me sure enough about 40 percent of my red cells were sickle cell trait cells and they were able to drop all the paperwork turn that into the military 
and then the military found me not fit for service because I was on the medication and I'm and my physical and my mental was uh, compromised. And so that's how I get to sit here in front of you now. Um, still challenging with my mental, but this is the one of my favorite days of the week because I get to make a difference and, and have people call in and share life experience with me. And um, this is like my self therapy. And um, to go back now and look at sickle cell trait and share information about that, but then rhabdomyolysis, um, was in my paperwork and I'm like, what, what is this? And I started doing more research and I started finding more people um, dealing with this. And so I got someone on the line that's gonna share with you uh, some information. So let me find out if he's here. You live, what's the count? I am live for Ron. yes I am. How you doing? I'm doing very well and I, I really appreciate your informative show. Thank you so much. Um, please introduce yourself to the listeners for me. Yeah, I'm uh, Dr. Francis O'Connor um, from Bethesda, Maryland. I work for the uh, Consortium for Health and Military Performance at our Military Medical School, Uniformed Services University of the Health Sciences. Wow, and, and I'm I, I'm honored to have you, you know, be a guest here. Um, I was reached out um, by the university um, a few weeks ago, and you guys are doing a study on rhabdo and African Americans and exertion. So can you please um, give us some background of, of how long you've been doing this research um, personally? Um, well, I've actually been interested in sickle cell trade and exertional rhabdo for now over 30 years wow. when I witnessed my first um, sudden death in a NCO at Fort Dix, New Jersey. Um, but I've been working at the university probably for the last 12 years on exertional rhabdo, we evaluate at uh, the university uh, soldiers who have had problems with exertional rhabdo. Uh, and in particular, we're very interested in um, exertional rhabdo associated with sickle cell trait and sickle cell trait collapse associated with rhabdo as it obviously speaks directly to readiness of the force. Yes. Um, but, but with sickle cell trait in particular, um, its impact on African Americans in the force, as we have thousands of African Americans in the force who have sickle cell trait, it's it's a very important issue. And 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 I had no, like I said, no idea. So if you could, you know, share um, some some details of of your study and what you want to accomplish, if you could do that for me. Well, yeah, I, I would like to just give a little context after listening to your show. Okay. Um, you know, exertional rhabdo, I think it's very important for everyone to know that it can occur in anyone, Caucasians, Hispanics, Asians, African Americans. Anyone can have exertional rhabdo. Yes. Um, but with sickle cell trait, um, as you pointed out, uh, it does have this odd association with exertional sudden death, um, which is concerning. Now, when we take a look in the military with those soldiers, sailors and airmen who have sickle cell trait, the chances of an African American with sickle cell trait having an exertional sudden death with an explosive rhabdo that you've described is about one in 3000. Mm -hmm. So the chances of being sickle cell trait positive and having this terrible rhabdo event is relatively rare. Right. However, one in 3000 is a very real number. Uh, there was a study recently done actually in uh, taking a look at NCAA athletes in football yes. and actually identified that that risk in Division I NCAA football to be about 1 in 815. Yes. So that's a real, it's a real risk. Um, but the fascinating thing to us at Uniformed Services University in CHAMP is the 1 in 3,000 or the 1 in 900 means that 2,999 are absolutely fine and they have no problems with exercise. So what is the difference? Why is it that some people with sickle cell trait have problems and most do not? That's what we're very interested in. <laughs> uh, and that's the, yeah, and that's the study that we're doing. Yeah. And I, I, again, I'm, I'm just shocked that when I was reached out by your, by your, by your school, that this was even taking place because it is such a an important conversation, and especially in the work that I do now, um, life after the military, and 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 sharing about sickle cell trait and the 
the impacts and the results of it was possible and people are like nah that's not you know that's not true it, it doesn't happen or you know it's still it's such a com you know conflicting conversation it's like but if you see the ncaa did it mandatory for the student athletes across the board well we i, I mean in our some in my opinion that was to make sure that they don't get sued and things like that financially reasons but I, we still find that there's still some information missing for those student athletes about why they're getting the test done and, and what sickle, sickle cell trait is. And so I've been working as much as I can to get that message out about the facts of sickle cell trait. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that the information and the messaging is so important because you want to give out the facts. You want to give out right information and you certainly don't want to give misinformation because I think one of the most important things for African Americans is well, as anyone else, is they need to exercise. Yeah. And they don't want to have to exercise in fear. Um, so we need to know the facts. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing this study. Um, we're looking in our study at the university at CHAMP to try to identify cases like yourself who have had exertional rhabdo events that are associated with sickle cell trait that have been relatively profound and life-changing. Look at some of the genetics uh, behind those cases and other cases, or those people with sickle cell trait have no cases, and try to understand what's different. So that eventually we get to, I think, where you want to go, is that we can understand why is it that some people have problems, other people do not, yes. and can we give good information to people so that they can exercise uh, without fear. Uh, and, and again, thank you for, for your time and for calling in. And so in my in my advocacy work, I've met families who have lost loved ones. Um, Ted a new I met his brother. I interviewed his brother a few weeks ago. Um, there's a lady Renee out in Oklahoma who lost her son. Um, they thought he only had sickle cell trait. He was 27 years old, ready to go play football overseas, and was doing CrossFit to stay in shape. Mm. Went to sleep and died in his sleep. The autopsy showed mm. that he had sickle cell trait and alpha thalassemia. So he was actually mm. exercising with a form of sickle cell disease, and the family had no idea that the thalassemia trait was in their family until his autopsy. And so these are the kind of conversations, you know, that we don't want to scare people, but to want people to be aware of the genes that you carry, because those red blood cells that carry oxygen are really important you know, to our to our system and how if compromised by dehydration or exertion, um, something like that could happen to their, their loved one. Absolutely. And I think the other theme I heard from all your speakers is not only the attention to hydration, but the attention to trying to avoid novel over exertion, giving yourself opportunity to rest between sets of exertion, uh, and building up gradually, acclimatizing to the exercise load, anything that's novel uh, without an adequate rest, that seems to be a trigger uh, in addition to the sickle cell trait, uh, all in combination. So these are, these are all important uh, pieces of information to your uh, listeners. Now, I, I, before I retired, um, I met an officer, and I still have his phone number, who, when I was sharing you know, about my process out of the service, he shared that he experienced a type of exertion with rhabdo with thalassemia trait. Like he knew he had thalassemia trait and he was a runner. And he said that he had that same kind of experience that I had, but he had thalassemia trait. And so do you know if, is it, you know, I see the focus is sickle cell trait. Um, is there, are, are we overlooking some of those other inherited genes like C trait and D trait? And, and, or can you say anything about that? Not at all. No, I think that that remains part of the question. You know, what combination uh, leads to the trigger of this explosive rhabdo? We're, we're trying to identify that. Now, I will tell you in general that alpha thalassemia tends to be a protector for those people with sickle cell trait. Now, that's not true with all, but in general, alpha thalassemia can be a protector when in combination with sickle cell trait. Okay. Um, at least that's what the literature and the observation tells us. <laughs> I think it's very important, again, to get the message out that people with sickle cell trait can have rhabdo like anybody else. Right. But it's this explosive rhabdo right. uh, where your CK levels, I heard you talking earlier about baseline CK levels. You know, a normal CK is anywhere between about 150 yeah. to 
you know, 500. Interesting, we've done research in soldiers. African Americans generally have CKs that are about four to five times higher than normal. So it's not uncommon for an African American to have a sickle cell trait, or excuse me, a CK in the range of 700 to 900 and be normal. Yeah. When someone has rhabdo, their CK may go anywhere between 5,000 to 50,000. Yeah. But with explosive rhabdo that we've seen, sickle cell trait positive ex- exercise associated collapse with sickle cell trait, these are in the ranges of hundreds of thousands to millions yes. uh, with CK elevations. It's really profound. Yeah. Mine was at 12,000 and rising, and that night doctor, when he saw that they were so mm. high, he was like, okay, we got to do something. And so they just IV'd me for the, for the three and a half to four days to flush my kidneys. Mm-hmm. My, my kidneys were at 50% each at the time that they um, caught that. And so, wow, yeah, very important. So uh, is there anything you want to share before uh, my time is up? Is there anything that you want to yes. add to any information? Well, the one thing I just do want to share, uh, again, we are very interested in reaching out to anyone who's interested who has a, uh, a sickle cell trait related complication with exercise and to reach us. I just want to tell you our number. It's 240-479-9514. Again, 240-479-9514. We're trying to enroll with just one simple blood donation uh anyone who has had a sickle cell trait related complication because we'd ideally like to unravel this and be able to provide good information in the future again thank you so much for your time and i really appreciate you for for calling in and i'm i'm looking forward to speaking to you offline because i'm I'm definitely interested in 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 doing whatever i can to help this process and, and make a difference when these and especially in my military community i've been waiting to be able to um, share information and share my story and help bring some awareness to this cause. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and for your advocacy, and I'm happy to talk to you anytime. All right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Right, this is WDC Radio. I'm your host on WDC. Again, I want to thank you for tuning and listening in. I got to get out of here. Uh, catch me in about an hour and a half right here on LA Talk Live. We're going to do a special uh, edition show, so keep it right here. WDC Radio, I'm your host from WDC. Shout us out, what's the count? Thank you for tuning in to LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network, original reality radio and crafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Stay tuned.